দর্শক আমন্ত্রণ জানতে চাই শুনতে চাই আজকের পর্বে আজ আমরা কথা বলবো বাংলাদেশ ও জার্মান দ্বিপাক্ষিক সম্পর্ক ও ভবিষ্যৎ নিয়ে আমরা কথা বলবো আমাদের মাঝে বিদ্যমান বাণিজ্য এবং এটি কিভাবে সামনের দিকে আরো এগিয়ে নিয়ে যাওয়া যায় আর এই বিষয়ে কথা বলার জন্য আমাদের সাথে স্টুডিওতে অতিথি হিসাবে উপস্থিত আছে ঢাকার জার্মান দূতাবাসের হিজ এক্সেলেন্সি ডক্টর থমস প্রিন্স ওয়েলকাম টু দ্য শো আরও আছে জার্মান বাংলাদেশ চেম্বার অফ কমার্সের প্রেসিডেন্ট জনাব তৌফিক আলী আপনাকেও স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি Uh, Excellency, I'd like to start with you. What are the current volumes of bilateral trade between Bangladesh and Germany? The current volume of bilateral trade is an export volume from Bangladesh to Germany of 4.9 billion euro. And uh, it's an import from, Europe, uh, from Germany to Bangladesh of 722 euro. Uh, million euro in 2016 and that is in both cases in both directions a tremendous increase from uh, the year before so we are far ahead than Germans right <laughs> Pardon? we are we are ahead than you yeah you are ahead that is because uh, we love wearing Bangladeshi uh, ready-made garments right. um, uh, Tofik uh, I would really know though the number is really high and it's getting higher and higher but uh, is it like diversified apart from the RMG? What are the things we can export more to Germany? Well, first of all, uh, the concentration is still very much on the garment side. But I think we can also, uh, there's a lot of room for diversification in terms of leather, in terms of ceramic, in terms of IT, mm -hmm. and other uh, service industries. I think we have to change our mindset in terms of physical products mm -hmm. and I, I also think that you know Bangladesh should, should come up with uh, new ideas and innovative ideas as to how our large manpower can be utilized and how we can provide service to a lot of service industries which are based in Germany mm -hmm. and catering to the rest of the world. So um, we should not only be focusing on products like uh, which are adding smaller labor forces or you know smaller value addition now we should think of larger value addition to make our country achieve the goal of going into the middle income group and how your chamber of commerce is uh, working in this particular sector well bangladesh uh, german chamber of commerce and industry is very focused on uh, facilitating any company who's uh, interested to set up any comp any any office in bangladesh or in factory in bangladesh um, and we are also very closely working with uh, institutions like BIDA, BEZA, mm -hmm. BEBSA. Mm -hmm. And we are always trying to help um, these companies or this institution to reach out clients to Germany as well as German companies coming into Bangladesh. And for that matter, we are trying to help them out in setting up connectivity with the right partners, with uh, getting uh, or at least giving them right advice so that they can get their permissions done in a shorter time than longer time. And also we are uh, trying to maintain a very warm relationship on right. both the sides so that things get faster. What the plans German government bring to uh, kind of balance the bilateral trade are bringing more investment as he's working with his chamber of commerce? Well, we have no deliberate plans to balance the um, bilateral trade. I think this is a, a natural development which mm. uh, is going to happen. Uh, as Bangladesh becomes richer, there is mm. a growing demand for uh, consumer products from um, luxury cars to right. uh, furniture, kitchens, mm. cleaning mm. Uh, machinery like Kercher, um toys, Playmobil is here. So we see more and more uh, luxury consumer product companies coming to Bangladesh and taking advantage of this growing uh, market here. So I think uh, on the long run we will see a more balanced uh, bilateral trade chain. right and uh, recently we have seen a news on the newspaper that Bangladesh is one of the fifth country buying BMWs <laughs> if I'm not wrong so there is a demand for luxury cars and luxury products in Bangladesh in the keeping that in mind um, uh, other uh, giant companies from Germany are becoming with that huge investment that's possible right 
we do not see huge investments coming from Germany. We see uh, consumer um, goods being sold here, mm. but uh, beside those older investment which, which date back to the 60s and even 50s, right. like Siemens, Bayer, BASF, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. then maybe a little bit later DHL, freight forwarding, we do, do not see too many new investments coming to Bangladesh, and that's a little bit worrisome. Okay. How can we can kind of uh, attract the investment uh, from the German? Like, uh, if, you, if I'm not wrong, if you have seen the recent visits from the, uh, the highest of the Chinese delegation and the, our PM went to India, they both had uh, kind of investment and things like that. We also want investment from the Euro Europe. And German is the leading, if I'm not wrong. So how can we attract the big giant investment? It's a huge task. Bangladesh at the moment is number 176 in the doing business index. And um, mm. that is, there is only one Asian country, and that is Afghanistan, which is doing worse in this index. So all your competitors in Asia, all your neighbors, are doing better in the doing business index. In the perception of corruption index, Bangladesh is on position 145 of 176. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it dropped six places from last year to yes. this year. Uh, so there are huge challenges which have to be addressed by the government to bring foreign investment to Bangladesh. Right. Mr. Tofik, as he was saying, mentioned the numbers, and you could, we cannot deny these numbers. So there are scopes and there are some challenges. And if I'm not wrong, you are in between the government and the, the, the foreign friends like we have from the Germans. So what's your feeling, how we can really move up, keeping these numbers in the mind? Well, w what the Ambassador, His Excellency, just said is a reality. We cannot deny that fact. However, we, uh, from the German side, as well as from the European delegation side, we are closely having dialogues with different bodies in the government, like NBR, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, the BIDA, BIDA uh, and other respect, mm -hmm. uh, respective departments who are, you know, solely or, or who are interested or who are responsible for bringing in more foreign direct investment into Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. We are talking to them and we are also talking to Bangladesh Bank, the central bank, and how to make right. things easier for any foreign company who would be interested or who are already here to do more business in Bangladesh. Mm. Because I think every company who are already here in Bangladesh or who, who are planning to do Bangladesh, they try to evaluate where the country is moving towards. Right. And is the rules and regulations becoming more open, mm. more favorable to them? Right. And we also have to always keep in mind that there are competitors of Bangladesh, yes. like Vietnam, like Sri Lanka, like India, and what these com com countries are offering to bring in more foreign investment. direct investment. So we have to really go above them and make things easier and more convenient and more conducive so that whenever they're thinking of making additional 100 million or 10 million or 1 billion mm. dollar investment mm -hmm. into any country, mm. Bangladesh would shine high. Excellency, how do you evaluate the overall impressions of uh, this uh, Bangladeshi uh, environment for FDI, how do you? Well, as you see from the figures, it's getting better. We are, do, we are doing more business with each other. So that's positive. There are quite a number of obstacles. We're mm -hmm. optimistic, especially we have the support of the new chairman of BIDA. Uh, we have the support of the Honorable Mister, Minister of Commerce. Uh, but we, are, we, we see also some institutions which are not up to the challenges of a globalized world. Right. And we hope that uh, those forces in the government who are uh, trying to help us mm. to open Bangladesh for foreign investment, that they will prevail and we can go on in uh, increasing our bilateral um, relations. 
on this particular note, I have to take the first break. Dr. Kamala, I have to say German Bangladesh, Dibakki, Shampur, Kone, Bishish Kore, Banijer, Ketre, Amadeer, Jee, Shambhavu, Nagulo, Aache, Shee, Shambhavu, Shambhavu, Nagulo, Amra, Kibhabe, Amadeer, Dara, Prutujugi, Aache, Vietnam, Kotha, Aache, 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 Bharati, Kotha, Aache, Silongar, Kotha, Aache, Tadar, Shate, Ehi, Prutujugi, Tama, Lo, Bishwa, Baje, Tiki, Thakte, Pari, Bing, Bidishi, Bino, Niyashte, Pari, Shee, Bishwa, Gilo, Ne, Kotha, Bol, Chilam, Tabe, Alo, Chuna, Cholte, Thakbe, Aakon, Ote, Biroti, Shumai, आमंत्रण आरोप एक बार जानते चाहिए शुद्ध चाहिए रात्स के पौर में कथा बोलते हैं हम जार्मन बांग्लादेश दीपाक्षी शंपुर को व्यवस्था बने जो एक बंगले भविष्य नहीं है एक्सेलेंसी इन फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ़ द शो वी टॉक्ड अबाउट बांग्लादेश इस फिफ्थ इन द एशिया बाइंग बीएमडब्ल्यूज दैट इस to become middle income country in mm. 2021. Do you want luxury or do you want something else to grow more? Basically, I'm happy for BMW and I'm happy for the BMW customers. I myself drive a BMW in Germany and it's a great car, but actually uh, it's not what Bangladesh needs. Right. As a German ambassador, I'm not too happy about growing numbers of luxury cars sold in Bangladesh. What Bangladesh needs is a more equal distribution of uh, income Mm -hmm. and not a small group of top rich who buy BMWs. What we need is to import machinery to help Bangladesh growing. What we need is newest technology because Bangladesh right. is devo developing into a high-tech country and rather prefer helping Bangladesh on this progress to mm -hmm. become a high-tech nation, a middle-income nation. Right instead of uh, having too much BMWs congesting the streets of Dhaka. What do you think? I, I would take the same lead from uh, His Excellency, uh, the Ambassador, because, um, and we are actually, I'm very happy to see that more and more plant and machineries are being bought, brought in from Germany, mm -hmm. which are going to produce higher quality of textile products, higher quality of food products, mm. and so on and so forth. So I think that is where we need to invest and that is where we need to focus on because if we can produce the raw materials in a better way than what we used to produce from cheaper, non-durable uh, plant and machineries, I think it is much better that you know the entrepreneurs are realizing the fact that the German machines have do produce much better products mm -hmm. and that gives us edge over other Asian products which we ultimately export to uh, the destinations like USA mm -hmm. and Europe. So um, it is a win-win situation for us because um, it gives us longer term and better return on the investments and also quality products. And that gives us again another leverage in terms of when we are competing with other exporting countries. So if a product f which is being produced from a neighboring country where the missionaries are homegrown mm -hmm. or homemade, and if we are producing the similar kind of product from a German machine, I think the quality would be much higher and we can get better export figures than them. Right. Do you do the uh, expos and uh, uh, summits and uh, seminars and conference and how the reaction from the, uh, from the general people? Well, first of all, we do try to organize seminars and we try to do um, other events mm. in order to attract more Bangladeshi companies to rip the fruits of already what Germany has produced. Right. And the German, there are quite a few number of famous German fairs which are happening throughout the year. Mm. And all uh, from all, of the world, all over the world, people are going and trying to see what the specialties are, what are the new products, what are the new technologies that are being invented and introduced into the market. And um, I think uh, the entrepreneurs in Bangladesh are gradually moving and realizing the fact that it is much better to invest in the right kind of technology, in the right kind of products, uh, plant and machinery, which will ultimately benefit us. Excellency, as, uh, as BGCI do a lot of seminars and a lot of German companies come to Bangladesh and uh, when they meet the 
the, the companies, uh, do they find quality and compliance? Uh, what's their observation in particular sense? Because they probably uh, share their observations with you. Well, for some of the German uh, machinery um, factories, uh, Bangladesh is a perfect market. The uh, growing RMG production leads to a higher demand for mm. German knitting mm. machines. Mm. And um, the German producers of these machines, they might be a little bit more expensive than their Asian competitors, but they sell also the know-how, the mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. and they guarantee the service Right. for whatever time. So even if after 30 years you get the spare parts for these machines and you can sell them as second hand if you want with a relatively high price. So there is... A but there is a longevity. There is a long longevity and there is also the training coming with it. And what this, that is what we try to promote as a German government also. Mm. Uh, we do not only want to sell products here. We yeah. want to deliberately go together with Bangladesh on this way towards a higher technological development. So I give you one example, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, our two heads of uh, government, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister during her visit in Munich and mm -hmm. uh, the German Chancellor, they have agreed to work together on an e-passport project yes, for, yes, for Bangladesh. Yes. And our aim is not only to produce e-passports and sell it to Bangladesh. We want that after a certain period of four, five, six years, Bangladesh is doing that whole production process by itself. The whole technology transfer, and it's a high-tech product nowadays, yes. shall be done by Bangladesh. The training is provided and all the know-how is provided so that that Bangladesh in the end is doing its own production of security printing for all, all kinds of passports, mm. e-cards and whatsoever and even can use that for export itself. So uh, we do not want to sell only. We are looking for long-term cooperation and we want to help in technology transfer. Right. Uh, Mr. Tofik, as we've been talking about this uh, German Malanesh relationship and the trade relation where RMG have taken the biggest space, but we see the gro we see the gr uh, we have seen the grown of uh, Vietnam, maybe some part of Ethiopia and Cambodia. They are also coming with potentials. Do you think that's a threat for us? I mean, that's a message for the RMG sectors and the business people and. Uh, uh, probably the BGMEA and people like that. As a banker, as a pragmatic person, I would always like not to undermine my competitors. So, which basically means that I should take everyone very seriously mm -hmm. and uh, I should always try to think that, you know, which could be my next set of challenges. And I, as, a, as a, an individual or a country, we should always think that you know, we should try to be ahead of our competitors and we should try certain things which always keeps us more competitive than others. And to do that, what kind of requirements are there, we mm -hmm. should always keep on. It's a, it's a completely you know, dynamic process, mm -hmm. so we should continuously keep on evaluating our strengths, opportunities, weakness, and then you know, we should make certain plans again you know in three mm -hmm. phases like short term mid term and long term right, right so you know what could be uh, the next challenges is it power is it infrastructure and what can be done in next 2 to 5 years right. and what can be done in next 5 to 10 years or 15 right. years and right. then beyond so i i think you know um, the names uh, the, the countries names that you have just mentioned they're always uh, they will always be there and uh, i think we have got far more severe challenging countries around us mm -hmm. um, who are really, uh, you know, could be really uh, serious competitors of ours. But um, with our resilient manpower, um, with, our, with the right kind of attitude, uh, with the right kind of support, we, we can actually, you know, outperform our competitors. On this point, I would like to know your observation, but before that I have to take another <laughs> break. <laughs>
So hold on to that. দর্শক আমরা আলোচনা করছিলাম যেমন বাংলাদেশ সম্পর্কের পার্টিকুলার জায়গা যেখানে তৈরি পোশাক শিল্প একটা বড় জায়গা দখল করে রেখেছে রফতানির ক্ষেত্রে সেই সেই ক্ষেত্রে আমাদের সামনে কি কি ধরনের চ্যালেঞ্জ আছে এবং সেই চ্যালেঞ্জ আমরা কিভাবে মিট করতে পারি সেই বিষয়ে আমরা আলোচনা করছিলাম আলোচনা চলতে থাকবে তবে সময় হলো একটা বিরতির সাথে থাকুন ফিরছি একটু পর আমন্ত্রণ আরও একবার জানতে চাই শুনতে চাই আজকের পর্বে কথা বলছিলাম জার্মান বাংলাদেশ দ্বিপাক্ষিক সম্পর্ক ব্যবসা বাণিজ্য এবং এর ভবিষ্যৎ নিয়ে আমাদের সাথে আছেন জার্মান বাংলাদেশ চেম্বার অফ কমার্সের প্রেসিডেন্ট তফিক আলী এবং আরও আছেন হিজ এক্সিলেন্সি ডক্টর থমাস প্রিন্স সো ওয়েলকাম অল ইউ এগেন টু দ্য শো অ্যাজ হি ওয়াজ সেইং অ্যাবাউট দি কম্পিটিটর্স অফ দি আর এন জি সেক্টর অফ বাংলাদেশ অবজারভেশন ওয়াই শুড উই ফোকাস হাউ ইউ শুড ফেকাস also the labor is labor issues of fact trade union is a fact mm -hmm. and keeping all those in mind we have the competitors how we really can move and how you can help us mm -hmm. i mean being the country being the friend german can help us mm -hmm. i think bangladesh is on the right track right. bangladesh has done pre great progress during the last years factory safety and so on what we have to have during the next years is a progress which is as fast and as good as uh, those in, in the building safety mm -hmm. we have to see that also in the uh, our workers relations and we have to see it also in environmental issues right. water is a big problem yes so uh, i think uh, the government of bangladesh is aware of these problems uh, we get the right signs from the government and Um, I think uh, Bangladesh has quite some advantages uh, compared to its competitors. Such as? Um, cheap and skilled labor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bangladesh can do um, huge quantities uh, in relatively short time. Uh, Bangladesh is extremely reliable and um, it's a fantastic workforce. And, uh, and uh all the foreign friends of bangladesh they talk about the uh, in freedom of union leaders uh, why it is important because why it's on the first row well i think bangladesh has uh, signed uh, the important conventions mm. of the ilo mm. um, to assure the uh, freedom of association um, and collective bargaining and uh, that has to be implemented by national laws Um, a couple of days ago we got a letter from secretary shipper from the labor ministry mm -hmm. uh, who is now in uh, geneva, geneva uh, discussing with ilo about these issues uh, that bangladesh is uh, going to fulfill these criteria in future and we are looking forward to that i think for um, modern uh, work relations is important to have a partner to bargain with Right. Uh, the Ashulia incidents have clearly shown there was a lack of trade unions. Uh, it was not the trade unions who started that. It was a wild strike. If you have trade unions in your factory, you have somebody to discuss with. And therefore, our experience is that trade unions are an important part of a trilateral relationship between government, employers, mm -hmm. and employees. Mm -hmm. And there we see some uh, need for progress in Bangladesh but I think the government is on the right track and your answer leads to me another question uh, we recently had the sustainable compact meeting mm. in Bangladesh uh, and uh, all the parties were there ILO EU Bangladesh USA Canada mm. all those there so what's your observation of the overall compact uh, meeting or seminar well is again there was, uh, everybody said Bangladesh is doing fine and factory safety but there are some issues and challenges uh, about trade unions here and that has to be addressed and uh, frankly speaking the compact uh, meeting was not um, let's say too we were not too optimistic but meanwhile uh, we have uh, received the reassurances from the government that mm -hmm. it is going into the right direction and uh, so optimism is back now and uh, let's see if uh, the promises will be put into practice during the next month and did he mention any uh, did the uh, labor secretary mention any particular time by, by which he will be able to come up the solution yeah he mentioned some um, very concrete uh, milestones for this process up to uh, june 2018 
there shall be a new uh, EPSET labor law, there shall be um, a revised uh, Bangladesh Labor Act, uh, and a few other regulations, uh, standard operation procedures for the regulation of trade unions and the registration of trade unions to make it easier and more predictable for them. And we are looking forward to see that because I think it's important for Bangladesh on its way to become a middle income country and a more developed country. And by the time there is a letter from uh, EU uh, that uh, mentioning about a time of uh, this year, August, uh, that uh, they will look at to this and they will kind of observe the labor issue. No, oh, well, that was before we got the answer from uh, okay. Secretary Shipper. We had two letters from the EU to the government. Now we got the answer from the government to the EU. And uh, we have now the ILO meeting in Geneva. We will have to see what's coming out of that meeting. And then we have to discuss further steps. Oh, that sounds really positive. We are mm. almost at the end of the sh uh, show. And uh, uh, my last question to the uh, uh, BCCI president, uh, what kind of support uh, BCCI really require from German government to increase the activities of in, bilat in terms of bilateral trade? Well, first of all, uh, from the, the day one, uh, when we the, the current leadership took over uh, the responsibility of BGCCI. We wanted to be the member of DIHK, mm -hmm. and this is a German Chambers network. And um, we have been seeking assistance from uh, His Excellency and um, his government. And uh, they are looking into the issue very positively, very passionately. However, we are still, uh, I don't know how many miles away from achieving our desired goal. But it, is, uh, it could be a long, challenging task for us to achieve that. But once I believe that you know, once we have those uh, membership in place, um, our own set of doing work would improve. Our set of uh, know-how would also improve. And there would be uh, not only a bilateral cooperation, I think uh, we can expect some regional cooperation because you know, when we become part of this and chamber network and um, uh, that is can that can only be beneficial for companies for institutions for both the countries and i do very strongly look forward to that kind of help from the german government german government and his excellency and his embassy his excellency your comments on his points. Well, i fully support uh, the president in his endeavor to become a member of the german foreign uh, chamber network it's a quite, quite a challenge at the moment. And we're in discussion with the relevant institutions in uh, Germany. That means, first of all, uh, the Ministry of Economics, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, DIHK, and with the Ministry of Development Cooperation. And uh, we hope that in the second half of this year, we will have a kind of an evaluation team from DIHK coming here to Dhaka, having a look into the work of the chamber, and then hopefully coming up with a kind of a roadmap how to develop the chamber to become a full-fledged member of the uh, network. Because when you are such a member of the network, then you get all the benefits from regional cooperation, participation in seminars, there is a delegation coming into Delhi, and they're sent also over to Dhaka, things you're like connected. that. Uh, you're better connected, and this could help us to um, get more people interested in the investment possibilities in Bangladesh. And therefore, we are both working uh, together very closely uh, to get the chamber into that network and hopefully we'll, we will succeed maybe next year. Or Thank you both next. of you for coming to the show and sharing your knowledge, your experience, and this will lead the relationship more stronger to mm -hmm. stronger, I believe. Thank you. All Thank you very much. Dr. Kamra Kotha Bulchilam, German Bangladesh Deepakik Shampur Kher, Naran Ketune, Bishesh Kore, Amade Turibushak Shilbo, and Shamne, the challenge Roche, she challenged Amaki Mid Kutepari, Pashabashi, Bangladesh, Ambassador Ebong Amade Arajun Ges, BCC President, Amunar Dujin Bolchil and J. Emut, the Bangladesh. বেশি BMW কেনার চাইতে তরকার ক্যাপিটাল মেশিনারি যেটা দিয়ে বাংলাদেশ নিজেদেরকে উন্নয়নের মাধ্যমে সামনে এগিয়ে নিতে পারবে এবং কম্পিটিশনে অন্যান্য দেশের চাইতে এগিয়ে থাকবে সেই আশা দেখা হবে জানতে চাই শুনতে চাই আগামী পর্বে সাথে থাকুন ভালো থাকুন